Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and this is Games Leaving the Collection for the month of April. It's a smaller month than usual this time around. We only have 10 games, and as usual, usual reminders for all those new to the channel. Also, welcome aboard, subscribe, like, share, all those usual things. I appreciate you. But also, usual disclaimers. First of all, I play a lot of games, generally in the range of three to 400 new games a year, and I could only keep a handful of those every single year, which means inevitably, games leave the collection. That's just the way it is. Games come in, games go out. Usually, I only keep the best of the best from me. I can give a game of four to five and then tell you later why it's not sticking around because I can only keep so many games. Do not take this as a ding on the game. In some cases it is. In some cases the game wasn't good enough to keep. In other cases we just I just have a limited shelf space, limited game time and I have to make hard decisions. So please remember even when a game goes it doesn't mean it's bad it just means that with so many games coming out every year hard decisions frequently have to be made including even getting to 10 this week was hard. Even getting to 10 was very hard. But anyways, that's number one. Number two, if you are a uh, channel member, either on Patreon or on Ko-Fi or on YouTube, we go ahead, or I go ahead, and I give away free games every single month. So if you are, uh, first of all, if you want to support the channel, it's always appreciated. Thank you very much. Links are always at the top of every single video. But if you are a member over on Ko-Fi or Patreon or YouTube, and Ko-Fi does give the best benefit to me on the channel in terms of the least amount of money is taken out if you uh, join on Ko-Fi. But if you do that, first of all, I appreciate your support. And second of all, is that free games are given out every single month, you might be getting one of those free games. And with that, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start this off. Timestamps to everything down below, and let's start off with, again, it's... I'd say half of the list today are games that I would get rid of anyway. The other half are is me going around the shelves and trying to make hard decisions because games just have to go. It is what it is. We're going to start with one of those. We're going to start with Fiction from uh, Fiction from All Play. Now, Fiction, designed by Peter Hayward from All Play, this is a very good game. I genuinely enjoy this game. It is what it is. The the realistic problem with Fiction is that as much as I enjoy it, I find that the people there are specific people I usually play these kinds of deductive games with, and I've played this game with those people, and I think that for them. It's ranked a little bit lower, uh, and then and I have enough deductive games that more of them are going to get played otherwise. But I think fiction is very very solid. Uh, the general premise of fiction is think Wardle. The idea is that you are you have a war that you're trying to get to, and you're fighting against a clue master. It's not cooperative. You're fighting against a clue master. You have your clue, so to speak, your ward. That ward might be crown over here, and then the other players try to guess what they are, and you tell them if they got the right ward in the right place, the right ward in the wrong place, so you're slowly working your way towards this. Well, how is this a game then, Alex? The way it's a game is because, as the clue master, you're allowed one lie every single round. One thing that you do every single round is a lie, and knowing how to guide the lie so that it can remain a degree of subterfuge as you try to last 10 rounds against your opponents, that gives you a lot of agency. The tricky part is that means that it's no longer a straight deduction game. If you're used to deduction games where it's purely deductive, well, that's not the case with this one. This one is deductive with the ability to see through a bunch of uh, a bunch of like rows of clues and being able to see, well, it's not that if A equals B equals C, it's that if I ignore this piece of information here and ignore that piece of information here, it all kind of coalesces into a puzzle. Very fascinating game, very different twist on deduction. I think if you like deduction games, you have people to play with them, this is definitely worth picking up. For me, I have a lot of deduction games, and I just think this one will get tabled less, not even based on my own taste, but based on the people I play these games with, I think they've enjoyed them a little bit less. Moving on. We have Catch Don Falcone. This is coming from the kids library. I occasionally prune their library of stuff. This is not a game that I would play with my group, but this is a racing game. It's a racing game where you're placing out tiles as you try to catch Don Falcone. There are going to be three cops in the game, and you're trying to place these tiles down, creating a path as Don Falcone wanders around trying to ultimately escape, while the police try to narrow him down and catch him by laying out tiles and cornering the camera, forcing him onto a loop onto itself. This is a mess in here. But the general idea of the game, it's a fun tile laying game. It's a very simple to table, very simple to play, uh, overall a lot of fun. Uh, for whatever reason, doesn't get pulled out by the kids. They never suggest it. I don't suggest it. I should suggest it. Too many games. Again, it comes down to too many games. Uh, they have an overflowing kids library as it is uh, of, of, the, of the family games we dive into. And while it's an overflowing family library, at the end of the day, um, this one doesn't get suggested or requested. So it's time for this one to go. And we have, do we have another one? No, I think, yeah, well, no, no. The other ones are, the other kids game leaving is... Fine. Anyways, Catch Don Falcone. It's a good game. I do recommend it if you like trial lane games, the degree of chase mechanism. I, I just find for whatever reason, I don't have a strong reason. I think it's a good game. If you like family games, kids games, I do recommend it. But we have a bunch of games that are requested and a bunch of games that kind of sit in the background not getting requested. This is in the latter category, hence why it's going today. But I did enjoy it. We have Stranger Things. This one I always knew I'd be getting rid of. 
I may even have told you I was getting rid of it in a different video. It's possible. I'm not certain, honestly. But I always knew I was going to get rid of Stranger Things because this is an episodic arc. There are two episodes in this. It's from Simon. It's designed by Rob Davio. And it's basically a, a, on in the Stranger Things universe. It's a cooperative game of trying to basically slowly defeat things and go through two episodes. Uh, you, you could replay them, obviously. There is replayability. You don't have to do. I think the problem, the problem with episodic games is if you had one episode, then it's a replayable experience. If you have two episodes, it feels like you play through the episodes to a degree. That's part of it. The other part of it is, realistically speaking... As much as I do enjoy Stranger Things, it's not my favorite game. I've had fun playing Stranger Things, I like Stranger Things, and I'm happy to not play Stranger Things again now that I've gone through both episodes. Well, a few times, actually. But uh, I, I like it. It's fine. I always knew this was not going to be a keeper. It's not my favorite cooperative game. I want to see what was in the game, how it was... How, like, I want to see more about it. But ultimately, it's one that is... Um, it's one that I don't need to keep. I'm happy to have played through it. And uh, if they come up with episodes three or four, I'd probably play it. But I don't think I would indeed feel the need to own that one either. Unless they drastically change up the gameplay mechanic. I think it's too luck-driven. The piles of tokens with random numbers is a little too luck-driven, a little too chaotic. There are just better cooperative games. But I like the IP and I like going through it. So it was an easy one to go through, but it was never going to be a keeper. We have Tiny Epic Pirates. This one has been sitting in my collection for years to get played. Uh, years. It's been a while. Uh, I finally have managed to table it. It's been in, a, I think it was in a roundup review, not a dedicated review. But for Tiny Epic Pirates, as much as I think it's a fine game... That's kind of where it taps out. In fact, most of the Tiny Epic series are games that haven't stuck with me. I've enjoyed some more than others. I really like Tiny Epic Defenders. Had a lot of fun with that one over the years. It didn't stick around. Uh, right now, Tiny Epic Vikings is my favorite one in this series. But even that, I don't know if it's going to compete with well, the bigger versions of those games. Uh, but Tiny Epic Pirates, to me, was totally fine. The Rondell was a little too complicated for me to overall enjoy it. Not enjoy it. I did enjoy it. The Rondell was too complex relative to what you got of the decision tree that I just felt it was a good game that was a little more complicated than I'd like and not rewarding enough. So I still had fun with it, but you know, again, good but not great is not a recommendation. Great is a recommendation. Like Don Falgoni is a good recommendation for a kid's game. Fiction, highly recommend this for a deduction game. Even games I recommend sometimes have to leave just because of the sheer volume of games. But next up, we have another one that's not really a question mark. This one is Sale. Another all-play game. Unlike Fiction though, Fiction is like, oh, I don't want to get rid of it, but you got to make hard decisions. And Sale is an easy one for me to get rid of. This is a two-player trick-taking game, cooperative trick-taking game, where you're trying to play a bit of a tug-of-war to navigate the ship, making sure it doesn't hit the wrong things, while trying to utilize the various abilities on the cards you're playing. I... I think tricky games are fascinating because very often I think they come down to whether you see the pattern. I think that's what they come down to. Did you see the pattern? Did you figure out what the kind of premise that was going on in the game? And for me, as much as I uh, like trick-taking games nowadays when I haven't before, Sale is one where I haven't been able to see the pattern. I have felt frustrated by the gameplay as opposed to rewarded by it. People have enjoyed this. I do recommend checking out other opinions because, again, I think trick-taking in particular very much is about being able to intuitively find the pattern of how to play a trick in a rewarding way. I'm glad others have seen that. I haven't found that in sale for me, so for me, it's an easy pass. Next up, we have another easy pass. In fact, we have two more easy passes before we get to the semi-hard ones. Well, two and a half hard. Some hard ones. We'll, we'll get into it. Deeksaw over here. Deeksaw from Stronghold Games. This was a complete miss for me. I love the premise. When it showed up, I was very excited for it. I thought it was a, a, a very interesting game that's a roll and cut. I like the premise of that. You're basically cutting out little sections of, of pieces as you segment various relics and whatnot. Very interesting premise. I like the premise of the game, but the problem is you are cutting tiny little pieces that are the shape of like that. That's the piece like, like there, like in that little hole in my hands. You're cutting those pieces up. It is a complete mess to table. It is not... like. I never thought it was going to be like absolutely rewarding game. I thought it'd be a fun game that I had fun playing and that, ah, you know, eventually maybe move on. Maybe the kids want to play it. Maybe I don't. I never thought it was going to be a game for me, but it's not a game for, I feel, I was going to say it's not a game for anyone, but that feels harsh. I'm sure it is a game for anyone. For me, I felt it was a mechanism that I'm intrigued by and would love to see implemented properly but cutting up a bunch of small pieces and having them get lost all over the floor while you play what is seem thematically seems to be a kid's game, that wasn't fun for anyone. It wasn't fun for anyone playing it with me, at least. Not because I was a Debbie Downer the whole time. It was actually kind of a little chaotic and crazy in a way that was, like, semi-fun, but only fun because of how chaotic and crazy it was, not because of the game. So, uh, yeah, Deeksaw was unfortunately a miss for me. Then we have Gearworks. Gearworks is a recent one. They just had this over on crowdfunding uh, from Peacekeeper Games, basically selling, like, older stock these had around for a while. Had a chance to cover this one. Uh, this is one that, unfortunately, I don't need to keep. I think Gearworks is fun. I enjoyed it. It's basically a Sudoku-style mechanism where you're kind of playing cards into a grid with the various restrictions. Uh, the, the few small issues I had with it, first of all, it has a mechanism I don't like in games, which is, like, last person and get something and again there are many ways to accommodate around that many ways to get past that but ultimately i don't like the mechanism where a last player who's who's going on a, 
it kind of incentivizes you to not go places until it's the last spot because then you get like you know more locked in so i didn't love that and overall i thought that the points versus the grid you're playing felt a little disconnected for me i think there's a good concept i'd love to see it implemented more i had fun with it but it wasn't a keeper for me that is uh gearworks from peacekeeper games then we get into the harder ones. Let's go with the hardest one last. Let's go with let's, this last three over here. I'm going to do this from easiest to hardest. Uh, we have Bora Bora. Fantastic game. I love this game so much, I can't even tell you. The only reason this is being gotten rid of is because I prefer Cusco. Cusco is the new version from Queen Games as part of the Stefan Fell City Collection. And yes, before you comment down below, I am very aware the Stefan Fell City Collection is a very expensive series of games. I think you need to be very, very... It's, it's a whole interesting conversation in general about why... Vital Lacerda games come in at $100 by default, and everyone just accepts that. But Stefan Feld games don't. And a lot of it comes down to expectations, which is, it used to be you can get a Stefan Feld game for $40, $50. Now they're all $100 from Queen Games. And so the fact that it used to be one way and it's a different way is an uphill battle that Queen Games is facing in their attempt to, you know, I don't know, sell you $100 Stefan Feld Queen, Queen Games Queen Games city collection games. The other issue is I do think uh, Lacerda games look better in general, but not always, and Cusco is one of those exceptions for me. Cusco, to me, plays better than Bora Bora and looks better than Bora Bora, and I think Bora Bora looks and plays pretty darn good to begin with. Uh, for me, I think the Queen Games city collection has been, in, from the ones I've played, Marrakesh is completely new, love that game. Uh, so Hamburg, I haven't yet played, I plan on playing it, but I prefer the look of Bruges, so even if it plays better, I'll be, like, conflicted. So there's all these, like, kind of, how do you manage different aspects of these games? Uh, Vienna, I don't remember a lot, love but i do enjoy vienna don't yet know if it's a keeper we'll find out but ultimately for me cusco is the one game so far that i've played i haven't played them all that is both looks better and plays better which makes getting rid of bora 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 easy even though i love this game this is an absolutely fantastic game so uh yeah, a fantastic game. Highly recommend Bora Bora. I think it's really worth hunting down this or Cusco, whichever one you can find cheaper. They're both great, although, again, I think Cusco is marginally better. And look-wise, you can judge for yourself. I mean, game-wise, you could as well, but that one you have to kind of get your hands on it first, so it's hence the uh, the looking part. Anyways, next up from the uh, next one that's not that hard, we have Hallertau. This is a little hard because I do like Hallertau. I've had a chance to play Hallertau once, and things are moving around in there. I've had a chance to play Hallertau once, and this is one that... I debated holding on to the play a few more times just so I could review it, but honestly, my after my first play, I enjoyed it, and then I was like, you know what, maybe I'll play it again to review it, because I don't like reviewing things I played once, but also because, like, on the off chance I'm do while, while I'm doing that, maybe I'll like it more. That was kind of my thought process. And while that thought process is still true, I just have too many games. And so playing a game I'm not excited to play is... A, is I'm not as excited to play, is harder for me to do. And so for Halatau, the issue I have with Halatau, it's a great game, very clean. Anyone who loves this game, totally get it. For me, it felt a little too similar to uh, Feast for Odin. It kind of, the general arc of, of the game and the escalating rounds, the more you do each round, the constant upkeep of things that escalates as well. Uh, there are a bunch of mechanics to the game that made it feel very Feast for Odin adjacent, and I already love Feast for Odin. To me, Feast for Odin just felt like a better version of Hallertau. And so as much as I appreciate this game, as much as I think it's a very solid game, and I understand anyone who loves it, for me, it was competing almost neck-to-neck -neck with Feast for Odin and the feel I get out of it, and Feast for Odin is just going to be the one that I prefer. So uh, here we are. Uh, I'm getting rid of Hallertau because one play was enough for me to both know I liked it, and for me to think that Feast for Odin is just going to crush it. And again, it's always possible multiple plays change your minds. Feast for Odin, fun fact over here, I actually did not keep Feast for Odin after my first play. I played it, I thought it was great, and I got rid of it. So that's a really good point to not get rid of Halatau, but I'm still going to get rid of Halatau. I think a big difference, a big difference for me. Okay, ready for a big difference as to why that matters? First of all, I could be wrong. The reality is, whenever you play games, sometimes I get rid of games and I'll have second thoughts. Sometimes those second thoughts will come two months later, sometimes they'll come three years later. Second thoughts do happen. And usually when I have second thoughts, I just get the game back and I try it. I'd say about 75% of the time I do that, the game leaves again because my first thoughts were right. But 25% of the time, I'm actually left with some great games. Evidel, to this day, Evidel is one of the games that I got rid of after the first, maybe it's the first two plays, I don't remember for sure, but after the first few plays, somewhere one, two, three, I don't remember, I got rid of it, and then I got it back, and I adore Evidel. So there's always room for who knows what in any kind of conversation. But that said, a distinction between Feast for Odin and Hallertau is that Hallertau, I played with someone who was enjoying the game the whole time. Feast for Odin, I was playing with somebody who was not. That can absolutely affect your enjoyment of a game. If you play a game with someone who's not, not there for it, who's not in the mood, that can totally adjust the way you it can totally adjust the way you perceive and experience the game and so for me i knew that and so years later i wanted to dive back into feast mode and i was like this game deserves a second chance i didn't give it a fair shot because i enjoyed it but i didn't enjoy it as much as i'd like and i played with somebody who was not into it while they're playing versus halatau 
all the way around. I played with somebody who it was their favorite game, I believe. So uh, definitely change that. Although you can make the argument that that set high expectations, that didn't get met. You can go anyway. Point is, at the end of the day, uh, arguments can be made left, right, and center, but you have limited game time. You have to make decisions. Sometimes going with your gut is what you're going to do. And this is where we get to number 10. Number 10 is the hard game today. This is one I agonized over. I pulled off the shelf. I put back on the shelf. I pulled off the shelf again. I put back on the shelf again. And here we are. I'm getting rid of it, unfortunately. I don't, I don't want to. Genuinely, I don't. But again, there's so many great games, and I do not get to play them all, and hard decisions have to be made, and so Lorenzo Il Magnifico is leaving the collection. This is a hard one. I think this is a fantastic game. The problem is, realistically speaking, I keep adding. I've added a bunch of mid-to-heavy Euros to my collection last year, and that's going to continue. As I continue to play more games that I enjoy, they continue going to, continue going to be adding new games to my collection. And my issue with Lorenzo Magnifico is Lorenzo Magnifico falls into a category of games where it feels tighter. Now, what I mean by that is, let's take an example, let's go with Cusco. Okay, Cusco I mentioned earlier in this video. Cusco is an excellent game by Stefan Feld where I don't feel things are tight and constricted the whole time. You are trying to get a lot done, but you just, you're kind of getting more the whole time, and how much more you can get is a different story. So you, you do have the feeling that I can't get everything done, but you don't have the feeling of tight constriction in the game, at least for me. Uh, versus something like Lorenzo Magnifico, I feel it's a little tighter the whole way through. I feel like I'm constantly struggling for the resources I need to get things done. It's not just about action economy, it's about managing, well, everything. And so that feeling is present. And I like that feeling in games to a certain extent, but I have many games that do it. And so I think I have to keep the ones that are doing that the best for me. Now, I have a bunch in this genre. I have games like, I'm going to look at my shelves over here, so if you see me looking off camera, it is what it is. I have Revive, I have Coimbra, I have, uh, I don't know, what, what else falls in? Gollum, I have Caverna, Feast for Odin. Uh, what else falls in this type of category? I don't even know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Brass, 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 my gosh. Encyclopedia, Anno. There's so many games that fall into this kind of midweight, heavyweight Euro category that I absolutely love and adore. Games that I've gotten so much from. And when I'm trying to weigh up, if I pull off a bunch of those games off the shelf, and they don't, not all those games are created equally. Something like, for example, I, what did I say? I, I don't remember. Like, Encyclopedia is less tight, for example, than, than Coimbra. When I pull all the games off the shelf that are in that tighter range, I do think Lens of Magnifico falls. Like, this is a 4.5 out of 5 for me. It's not. It's not good to get rid of this. I'm not getting rid of this because it's not a good game. I think it's a fantastic game and I highly recommend it, especially with the expansion. The expansion makes it better for me. But I do think that you always have limited game time. And when I'm making those hard decisions, I just think I'm less likely to pull Lorenzo off the shelf compared to other contrasting games that give me a similar vibe and similar feeling. So I'm sad about this. I'm not happy. I don't like it. It's one of those games I might have second thoughts about. But for right now, uh, this one does unfortunately go. Uh, but I, I, I do feel very bad. I do. I don't like it one bit. I don't know. I don't know. How do people do this? How do, how do like, you can't play everything. You just can't. I play, last year, I think of the thing I say, and I probably say this in every video, I don't know, but last year I played like 590 different games. Like 390 were like new to me. I can't remember the exact, I can't remember the exact breakdown. What I remember is I played around 200 plus unique games for my collection of around 300 games. That means there's 100 games already not getting played and I'm still adding and finding and discovering. And so, Every year, things have to go, and it's not easy. I'm looking at the shelf right now, and I can see a dozen games that I think should go, and I'm not. I'm just not ready to let them go. But I think they should, but I'm not ready. And that, that usually results in them staying on the shelf for like another year until eventually one day I either have played them or I haven't, and I say it's time to say goodbye. But different games are, are created differently. Lorenzo's a game I probably haven't played in two plus years, and I think I'm ready to go. Coimbra's a game that I reluctantly haven't played in three plus years, and it's not going anywhere. Coimbra is so good. I love Coimbra. I'm so upset there's not like a real expansion for it. There's like a modular expansion. I love Coimbra, though. I, I want more cards. I think it's so, so well done. Anyways, that has been your games leaving the collection for the month of April. I appreciate all of you being here. Reminder that if you are over on Ko-Fi or over on Patreon, some of these games will be given away to, uh, the, usually the higher tier backers are almost guaranteed a game. And if you're a regular uh, co contributor to the channel, then I'm basically just picking from, well, anyone who comments on the videos. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. I hope you appreciate this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one.